Everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach London. Thank you so much for joining me on this video, which is focused on giving you an overview of what to expect for Unit 6, which is the investigative project on the Level 3 Applied Science video. This is the second video that I'm creating, and this particular one actually focuses on learning aim A and really looking at what's needed to get the passes, the merits and the distinctions in this assignment. Now, this particular learning aim requires learners to undertake a literature search and review to produce an investigative proposal. Basically, you have to do some research to figure out which experiment you want to do, and you have to justify why you want to do that experiment. As a student, you're required to select a relevant area of study, either linked to chemistry, physics or biology, or if there's any combination of two of those, then that's also fine. The first thing that we have to consider is a literature review. Now, a literature review surveys books, any scholarly articles, so any published papers, and any other sources relevant to a particular issue, area of research, or theory. And by doing a literature review, you're providing a description or a summary, and even a critical evaluation of the works that have been done. And so basically what you're doing is researching the experiment that you're thinking about doing and telling the reader what you found out about it. So let's say, for example, your project proposal or the experiment proposal is to look at the effect of caffeine on heart rate in daphnia or water fleas. Your literature review will look at other scientific research that's been carried out on this topic and discuss what the findings were. Essentially, you need to do lots of research and document what you've learned from it. You'll be expected to provide a comprehensive bibliography and a list of references, usually using the Harvard referencing system. And in order to get the passes and the merits, your teachers will be looking for research that's obtained from textbooks, scientific papers and online sources. So you have to include a multiple range of sources, otherwise you might limit yourself grade wise. Once you've conducted your literature review, you should use this information to form the basis of your project proposal. So let's say that your literature review was on the burning foods experiment as an example. Which foods burn the longest to raise the temperature of the water the most? You would look at others who have done this investigation. How did they do it? Which foods did they use? Did they have any issues? This then helps you achieve the merit part of the task because in analysing your findings from the literature review, you were touching upon the M1. For the merit, you need to include information on limitations of your project, such as time available, the range of equipment that's needed, or even the accuracy of the equipment available in your school or college lab. The distinction part for this assignment will be awarded to students who show that they've considered a range of different methods. So, for example, let's say the investigation was on the rate of photosynthesis. One method to measure the rate of photosynthesis could be to count the number of bubbles of oxygen that the plant gives off. Another method would be to collect the gas in a syringe and measure the volume of gas that's been collected. In discussing different methods and evaluating them, you will be able to justify your chosen method, basically say why your chosen method is the one that you've decided to move forward with and give some really good reasons for that. Before you submit your proposal, you would also need to think of a hypothesis. This helps your teacher ascertain your understanding of the project and what your expectations are. One of the major issues that students have is picking an appropriate project. So before you start the literature review, you need to have a bit of a brainstorm of what you think is a suitable project to investigate. It needs to be something where you can get some quantitative data, which you can analyze using stats tests, such as the student's t-test or even chi-squared. The specification suggests that standard deviation is also a suitable data processing or analytical method. So even if you're just gathering means of samples and then you're doing a standard deviation test and put plotting error bars, that could be something that gets you the grades that you need. If you are watching this video as a teacher, you should ensure that each student in the group picks a different project, even if it's slightly different. So, for example, you can have multiple students looking at photosynthesis experiments, but have one that looks at light intensity, another look at the wavelength of light, another look at temperature, and so on. For students watching this video, there are a number of different practicals you could do. So here's a few examples of some of the ones that some of my students have gone on to successfully complete. 
So the first one I've got there is the effect of caffeine on heart rate. Now, some people choose to do this on some of their subjects at home. So they could use family members who are in healthy state and ask them to take a caffeine portion and perhaps do some exercise and then check their reaction times, so on and so forth. If your school or college can get hold of Daphnia or water fleas, then this is another experiment that you could also do. Lots of students tend to choose experiments that measure the rate of photosynthesis. So usually Elodea or pondweed is a good plant to use for this. I think most students do this experiment at GCSE. So you may just need to advance it in terms of your data collection methods or looking at the variables that you're testing. Lots of students also look at experiments that look at the growth of plants. So they will grow plants such as cress seeds or mung beans that tend to grow fairly quickly. And then they will measure things like the effects of acid rain. Now, obviously, going out and collecting acid rain is not something that I would recommend. But you could basically create solutions of different pH levels, different concentrations of pH, as I mean, and then um, use those to water the plants and then measure the growth. And that way you can tell which one grew the fastest in the um, time period you have, which one grew the tallest, so on and so forth. Some students look at choice chamber experiments. So this is quite a classic A-level biology experiment where you look at wood lice and you give them um, a choice of the chambers to go into, usually in a large Petri dish that's been organised in quarters where you have um, dark and damp, light and damp, light and dry, and dark and dry um, chambers I suppose is what I'm talking about and you pop the wood lice in and eventually what they'll do is they'll choose the chamber that they want to stay in this one's quite a good one because you can use the chi squared statistical test on this um, to analyze your data Another really popular one is looking at diffusion. Now, you might be thinking, well, diffusion is a GCSE experiment. Correct, it is. But you can elevate that experiment by looking at the neutralization reaction um, between acids and phenolphthalein. So that's something that you could look at, which is like, phenolphthalein is like a pink color indicator. One really popular one is the antibacterial properties of food products. So this time around, um, students grow lawn cultures of E. coli and they will create um, discs of, say, for example, lemon juice, vinegar, bicarbonate of soda. They might even use various acids or they might look at different cleaning products to see which one is the most effective. The burning food practical has been one that's been done quite a lot in unit three, where we burn a gram of of food or five grams of food, whatever it might be. And we hold it when it's flaming underneath a test tube of water and we measure how hot that water gets by the time the food has completely burnt out. So that if you're looking to do that one, you might want to look at unit three of the BTEC Applied Science to see what the methodology of that would be. A popular physics one is how the length and the type of wire affects the resistance of the wire. You use various crocodile clips and the power boxes that you might have in your lab to basically assess what the resistance might be, measure the current and so on. And one really new one and interesting one that I um, came across this year, one of my students was doing, was how the height of the ski slope affects ski jumping. So this was a really interesting one where they set up a mock ski slope and um, ran weights down the ski slope to see where the weights would end up. So that's quite an interesting one to kind of explore and look at. So I hope that was super useful for you all. I will be creating more videos for Unit 6 as soon as I can, so please do look out for them. You can find them all in the playlist that I've created on my channel or by clicking the link that's just flashed up on the top of your screen now. Thank you so much for watching, as always. If you've got any questions, then please leave them in the comment section underneath this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Bye for now.